Good morning, everybody. Um, it's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock is with Father Warner. We are in a new week, Monday, the 22nd week in ordinary time. Our text today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, 16 to 30. Now, I think this week I will teach you uh, the Gospel of Luke, but from next week I'm planning to do uh, the first readings. Um, so I might do a little bit of a shift, but if you would like to follow the Gospel of Luke on a daily basis, if you simply go to um, my YouTube page and you see we have categorized the teachings, so you will find previous teachings also on the Gospel of Luke. But for today, we are going to look at Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 30, and I've called this uh, teaching and titled this teaching, Cliffhanger. So let's read this. It's a little bit of a long text, but we need to go through it. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me the proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear the things in your hometown. Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did in, at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is that there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heavens were shut up three years and six months and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the town of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We begin today, as I said earlier, the Gospel of Luke, and we will continue to meditate on this gospel till the end of the year's liturgical cycle. You will get this gospel coming uh, till November. Now, the author of Luke's gospel, who is also uh, the author of the Acts of the Apostles, hailed from Syrian Antioch. And we know that um, St. Luke was a physician, a doctor. He was a master of the Greek language and also a companion or a collaborator of St. Paul. Now. Luke wrote this gospel sometime between the years 80 and 85 AD. Writing in a pluralistic Syrian Antioch, St. Luke addresses a very predominantly non-Jewish or a Gentile audience and he presents a very compassionate Jesus whose mission is inclusive, not exclusive. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus has a preferential option for the poor, a, option, a preferential option for the lost and sinners whom he restores to God. Now, Luke uses the Gospel of Mark as his primary source to tell his narrative of uh, what we would call the Luke and Jesus or the way he portrays Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. Now, Luke presents Jesus as one who walks the talk. Right at the outset of his Galilean 
ministry, Jesus announces his mission for the poor and those on the fringes, especially the Gentiles. It is in his hometown of Nazareth that Jesus declares publicly his pastoral mission. There are six incidences in Luke's Gospel that has Jesus actively involved on the Sabbath. Now, the Sabbath service was not a, a triennial cycle of readings as we have them in church today, cycle A, cycle B or cycle C. Nor was it led in those days by a ministerial priesthood as we have it today. The readings of today will tell us, uh, especially in verse 23, that the people of Nazareth were aware of the things that Jesus had done in Capernaum and in a way knowledge, uh, acknowledge him as a teacher, a rabbi, and so they honor him when he comes uh, to their little town by allowing him to read the scriptures and obviously after that to uh, preach to them. Now they chose the book, but he chose the verse. Look carefully, they chose the book, they handed him the prophet Isaiah, but he chose the verse. And while they seem to have no problem with the choice of the text, you can see that they had a problem with his interpretation of it. In choosing a text that referred to the jubilee year held once in 50 years, Jesus announces a time of good news. Good news for whom? For the poor, release to the captive, sight to the blind, and freedom for those who are oppressed. For Jesus, as for us, the good news is not to the metaphorically poor, as Israel in need, but rather for the economically, socially and physically unfortunate. This should also be our goal as Christians. Jesus makes clear his plan of action, what we call his manifesto. And he launches his mission in a synagogue in the small time town of Nazareth. Now, Nazareth was not some big ticket item, but then again, Jesus never came to be a big ticket preacher even though he was the Messiah. Most politicians launch their campaign on a special day in a special place where they'll get maximum coverage. Jesus went to a small time Nazareth and they say, I remember when I was touring the Holy Land, twice I uh, had the for good fortune. The people in the Holy Land uh, told me, they said, there could not have been more than about 30 families in Nazareth. So Jesus didn't find a big platform to announce uh, his, uh, his mission. And then comes in this text, this problematic verse, uh, verse 22, which reads, All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. Yet they follow this by saying, uh, immediately they say, But is this not uh, Joseph's son? Which triggers Jesus into a confrontational mode. So why this sudden switch from hospitality to hostility? Why did the people move? from hospitality to hostility. Now, the issue is really in the translation. The text should have translated, all spoke well of him, yet they were astonished at the words of salvation which came from his mouth. That should have been the correct translation. For he was not just the son of Joseph, but remember, Jesus is the son of God. Now, herein lies the answer. This for them was a local boy who had worked miracles in Capernaum and yet when he speaks the words of salvation as the son of God, the message now becomes a bitter pill. It's like sometimes when I say some things to you all, my message becomes a bitter pill. Nobody, I, I, I see this very, you know, very often in a homily when I'm preaching and I'm preaching a strong message, especially one that goes against the grain. I actually have seen people turn their face away. Yeah, thank God uh, in our nation, in our country, we don't have this thing of walking out like some of our ministers do in parliament. Uh, but I can see people wincing and they are unhappy. Yeah, they are unhappy. Why? Because they want you to go with the tide. Yes, Father, accept everything that we believe. No, I'm sorry. The church's teaching doesn't change to make you feel content and happy. And Jesus never came to make everybody feel happy. He, made, he came to lead them for, to the Father, which also included some extremely, extremely tough messages. Now, at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Luke has not only laid out Jesus' preferential ministerial option, as I said, 
for the poor but now he um, he explicitly states also his option for a group of people that must have caused uh, the jews to be shocked his option is also for the gentiles far from conciliating his audience and pleasing them jesus actually antagonizes these people in nazareth in defending his message of salvation jesus places two rather uncomfortable examples of truth from scripture in order to support his inclusive message episodes that you will find in 1 kings chapter 17 and also in 2 kings chapter 5 elijah the great prophet was sent to no home in israel but to a foreigner a widow of zarephath in sidon and he was sent during the time of the great famine that ravaged the land for 6 months and again we are told of the prophet uh, elisha elisha was not sent to any leper in israel even though there were many as we are told Uh, but he was sent to a foreigner a gentile naaman the syrian now when faced with the uncomfortable truth that god was not an exclusive god for the israelites but had also come to set free their hated enemies the towns folk of jesus set out to kill him listen to this often good news is not the good news we want to hear often good news is not the good news we want to hear the look at jesus is no pushover or a crowd pleaser don't look through this gospel and find jesus who agrees with you he does not reinterpret the scriptures to make his audience feel comfortable but he is boldly challenging them what's the result the result is a cliffhanger literally for they drive him out of town that they might hurl him off the cliff and so let us pray the father the son and the holy spirit amen lord jesus there are many times that i find your message very hard a bitter pill to swallow that's why sometimes i pick up books that agree with me i follow thinkers that subscribe to my thought you on the other hand lord didn't care about pleasing people you didn't care about how many followers you had on instagram how many friends you had on facebook how many likes you had to every post you just had one mission to draw all men and women to the father and the word is all so often lord i want you to be my god not everybody else's my savior not everybody else is the one who does things for me not for everybody else and you reject my message rightfully so lord because i have become exclusive while you were inclusive you came for all including the pharisees and the scribes whom you reached out to again and again Lord very often I am exclusive in the way I deal with people. I judge them by the color of their skin, their religion, their race. I judge them by their thoughts. I judge them Lord by which part of the city they live in, by their sexual orientation. by their education i have this program lord in my head i keep filtering people all the while and negating them and removing them and you came for all saint and sinner to draw all to the father
Lord, how terrible it would be if in your eyes I was excluded. How terrible I would feel if you did not cast a glance at me. And even though I would feel that pain, I don't realize the same pain I cause to others. Teach me to be conscious, Lord, that each time I step out of the lift, walk down the stairs, open my door, when I see someone, I greet them. I'm kind to them. I'm loving. I'm conscious. Lord, it takes so much of my energy. But I know it makes a difference. And that is what you are calling me, to be inclusive, to care for all, to treat all alike, from king to beggar. You loved all, Lord. And that's why in your manifesto, in your mission, you make it so clear that the Spirit of the Lord is upon you to bring good news to the poor, to the marginalized, to those in prison, to those without sight. So thank you, Jesus, for your message. Thank you for your love. I ask you today to protect my family and friends, those I love, and those who I do not love as I should. I want to pray, Lord, for our parish of St. Stephen's. Bless our parishioners. You've given them, you've given me that responsibility of caring for them. I want to pray for our youth that they may Come and worship you in this church. Come and serve you, Lord. I want to pray for our children and for their parents, that their parents may lead them to you, Lord. I want to pray for this parish that we may never have any form of division between rich or poor, between Goan or Mangalorean or East Indian or whatever we think we are. Make us one, Father. Thank you for the love that this parish has shared with us, priests. I want to pray for every single person watching this video today. Right now, they may feel your presence, your Holy Spirit as I do, Lord. Just with me, above me, around me. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. I hope you enjoyed today's teaching. I truly felt God's presence uh, around me uh, while I prayed. I don't prepare for these prayers. I just let my, um, I let, just let the Spirit of God lead me in each day. I know many of you write saying, Father, that prayer was for me. And I believe in my heart it was for you. That's what God does for us. So, God be with you. Please don't forget uh, to like these videos, share them with your friends, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment. It's very important that you share your own thoughts, your own feelings um, in the comment section. Uh, to do this very often, even to like a video very often, you have to register with YouTube, which doesn't take you very long. So, if you follow the procedure, you will be able to do it. Thank you, everybody, and God bless you.